we got four on that clock. We got a couple of minutes. What time do they have on KSR? Time to get started. Time to get started. Time to get started. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. See, if I don't find anything to adjust that clock back there, huh? May have been a good thing. Yeah. Here's your clock's wrong. They definitely can't go into the ball. Yeah, one minute too. Well, that's pretty close. I guess I'm about to give you one of them fancy watches. You know, the go, because when I put my phone on that tripod, I, I feel like I'm losing something. You know, I walk around and check looking for my phone all the time. Amen. Uh, yeah, we got a minute left. So we'll, we'll give everybody a moment. Y'all please do remember Miss Christy in your prayers. She's uh, not feeling well still. She's uh, just seems to be up and down. She has a doctor's appointment Wednesday. So if you'll pray for her, I'd appreciate it. Uh, hopefully she's watching. Uh, or will be uh, watching the live feed. She, she's hoping to be here tonight. She just, it, it wears her out so much trying to get ready. You know, then by the time she gets ready, she's just exhausted. Uh, so, we'll, uh, hopefully, she'll be able to rest up and tonight she'll be able to make it. So. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. In a minute, I can steal a minute. Uh, the lesson always needs an extra minute somewhere. No, you need yeah. to like right. Hey, hey, hey. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> All right. Very, very. Is she going to keep going? Is she going to stop? All right. Um, do you remember, Miss Christy? Uh, pray for Brother Bruce. Uh, Brother Bruce. Brother Bruce. I'm not looking at Brother Bruce. Uh, pray for Brother Chris. Uh, he'll be flying in tomorrow. Is that right? yeah. correct? Fly back in. So pray for him. Uh, well, he gets, comes back. Has, has, have you heard from him? Yeah, he's doing? Good time he's doing well? Yeah. Not, not overdoing. That, no, I don't think that so. was my concern. Not too bad, yeah. That he would overdo it. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you pray for him. I know he'd appreciate that. Uh, any other prayer requests? I'm going to pray for Emily this morning. All right. Miss Emily's not doing well. Um, I do want to mention a, a prayer request. Uh, the Decker family. And I don't. I don't know if they're they're connected with Brother Joe Decker and that family. I'm not, not sure if that's the same group of Deckers. Uh, but we had a, a friend of ours. Uh, I think Miss Katie was closer to him and knew him more than we did. Uh, Brother Jared Decker, uh, 36 years old, pastor of the church down. Who was he pastor? Louisiana. Uh, I don't know. Alabama. Just had taken. just taken the church in Alabama. Uh, uh, Friday night, he passed out, um, non-responsive. They called the ambulance, did CPR. They got in the hospital. He he passed. Uh, he 36 years old, six kids, uh, had just taken the church, just out of the blue. Um, so said he wasn't feeling well. Uh, and then we saw a post on Facebook where his wife posted and said, "Pastor just just passed out." Um, Called the ambulance. He's on his way to the hospital. He's non-responsive. Uh, so to pray for that family. Uh, I know they would appreciate that. Uh, Jared Decker was his name. So if you would pray for the Decker family. I know his brother is a missionary. Uh, brother, uh, Bobby Decker. Uh, and then Brother Jared had, had been involved in a lot of different mission works. And like I said, and we're now pastoring the church. So pray for pray for that family. Pray for that church. I'm uh, being a lot of things right, going on right there. Uh, and then I saw another friend of ours uh, ask prayer for another family that, that, that lost their mother, uh, two young children. Uh, she had cancer. Um, I, I didn't catch the name on that. So just a lot of things going on right now this time of the year. Excuse me? The Garaways. Okay. His dad passed away. All right. Uh, some other friends of ours, uh, the Garraways. Um, hopefully, you'll get to meet them eventually. I'd love to have them come. Uh, missionary, just a nice, good family. Lost his dad, so. Uh, All right, any others? All right, if not, let's go over in prayer. Uh, oh, I, I do remember uh, Brother Phil McCoy. He's teaching uh, the Overcomers class. I think I, I think I saw this week where they changed. They finally picked a name. It took them longer than it took, uh, took me. Start saying us. It wasn't us, it was me. Uh, 
But anyway, so over, he's teaching the overcomer class today, so you pray for them. Let's, let's go, Lord. Our Father, we're thankful for the day. What a joy it is to be able to come before your, your presence, asking you to, to hear uh, and answer our prayers. We know that according to the scriptures that you hear our prayers, we long as we pray according uh, to your will. Uh, and I pray that you'll give us wisdom to know exactly how to pray and what to, to, to pray for. I pray that you'll be with each one of the prayer requests, be with Brother Chris, Miss Christie. Uh, the Decker family, uh, the Garraway family, and all the, the different things that, that we see going on right now. I pray that you'll continue to be with Miss Mickey and Miss Emma. I help them as they start this life together. I pray that you'll just bless that union. Uh, help us to have a great day at church today. Looking forward to a great time. Uh, I pray that you'll bless uh, according to your will. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So everything working out, Miss Katie? All right. Is it your? As far as, as far as you can tell. All right. So here, we'll uh, one of these. <coughs> this for your mom. And I'll pass this around. This notes for today. I actually got those those done. I, you know, you ever have one of those days that things just keep going wrong and you know you, you just can't figure it out what's going, what's happening. I've had one of those days. It's just been already today. We've had several things happen, but. But, I'll say this, this week, uh, I had the outline done. Last Sunday morning, I got here, and me and Casey were here, and we were trying to get him set up, and then it dawned on me, I didn't have done uh, the outline, so I'm running there, running around trying to get all that done. So it's always something. Uh, always something. Uh, so we're going to pick up the, where, where we left off last week. We'll go ahead and jump, jump over in there. Um, we, we were talking about the Adamic age, uh, where, where we are. Uh, you can see all the little dots. We've got a long way to go uh, to get through all this. Some of these will go quicker than others. Some of them are just, just naturally more interesting, if you will, than, than others. I mean, we'll get in here a little bit and we'll talk about. We start talking about the tabernacle, and that's we're going to slow down quite a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll slow way down. We'll spend a lot of time talking about the tabernacle. We'll get into the kings and judges. We'll probably cruise right through that. You know, <laughs> oh, I can't pronounce all those names anyway. So we'll we'll keep moving. But all right. So we're talking about the Adamic age. Last week we talked about mankind. We talked about the creation of man. We talked about uh, how God made us. Uh, and we've got to if we're gonna if we're gonna take care of us, we've got to understand us. We've got to understand how we're made, how we're put together, uh, and what God's doing in our life. We dealt with that last week. Today we're going to deal with this thought of original sin. Original sin. All right? and, and we want to clarify that or define that. We'll do that as we go through uh, and, and understand why we're using that phrase original sin uh, as opposed to, I hate to use the word regular sin, but let's use this word, everyday sin. All right? Because there's a big difference. That there's a big difference in the sin that we do today, that we commit today, in comparison to original sin that we inherited. One demonstrates that we are headed to hell. The other is just a result of that demonstration. Because of our original sin, we are sinners. And I think I said this last week, uh, we we. We are not sinners because we sin, but we sin because we are sinners. Does that yep. make sense? Yep. Because a lot of folks, you know, they think, well, well, we'll get into that. All right. So we're going to be talking about original sin today, uh, and, and we'll jump in and we'll, we'll run with that. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's just jump right in. And, and we'll start with this fall of original sin. Now, there's a couple of, of things. Go ahead and take your Bible if you want to in Genesis chapter 3. That's where we'll... We'll be looking at some of the verses there. Uh, we'll have some on the screen. We'll have some, we'll maybe reading a few as well and just looking in uh, to a couple of things there. Uh, because, of, of course, Genesis chapter 3 is the record of what we would refer to as original sin. All right? Uh, and it just, my mind's running. i got 40 different verses in my head right now. They're just going for talking about, uh, uh, anyway, that's, we, we'll stick with the lesson. So let's talk about a couple of thoughts to start with. How, how many of us would agree that, that with this statement? No one naturally admits to being a sinner. No one naturally admits 
to be a sinner. There's two verses there if you want to look right down and, and look at them later. Proverbs 16 and verse 2 and Proverbs 20 and verse 6 talk about that. So no one naturally admits to being a sinner or desires to reveal the darker side of his nature. No one wants to admit to being a sinner, having sinned, and uh, revealing that dark side of the nature. In fact, a common delusion is that mankind is steadily improving. We're steadily getting... How many of us have had kids and understand that, that is, that's not the case? <laughs> Young people left to themselves are a mess. All right, let me see point. Amen. All right. Uh, we, we have to teach them. They have to learn, all right? Um, it, it's kind of like, it, that, that it, it illustrate, bad illustration, but um, I'm full of them. I, I never have a good one. Um, it, it's kind of like that old, that old clunker sitting out in your, in your front yard. If it sits there, it is going to rust and rot and fall apart. It's not going to sit there and get better and better, shinier and new. You know, it, you, it's not going to happen that way. Well, well, people are the same way. Left to themselves... We're not going to improve or get better. Self-improvement. That's an oxymoron right there. All right? But you, you get a book. Now, just think about that. You get a book on self-improvement. Is that really? No, you got a book. Somebody's helping you. Oh, okay. That's, I chased that rabbit. All right. Second thought. Second, second statement. Little, and I borrow this, little wonder then that Satan seeks to have men reject the first 12 chapters of the book of Genesis. After all, the simplest way to keep men from being saved is to convince them that they don't need to be saved. Now, that's a deep statement. But that is true. The simplest way to keep men from being saved is to convince them that they don't need to be saved. Well, I'm good enough. Brother, Brother Bruce and I talked to a gentleman yesterday. And he seemed like a nice guy. Came to the door, talked to him for a few minutes, didn't seek his dog on me, uh, which that's a plus right there. We're, at that, we're, 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 we're on the plus side. And I asked him if he went to church, and he said, well, you know, they were. I, I forget, I think he said they were I don't remember if, if this one said he was looking for a church or between churches or exactly how he said that. So I asked him, I said, well, you know, if this was your last day on earth, tomorrow would you be in heaven? And he said, his response was, well, I don't know if anybody can really know that. <laughs> and I, you know, I politely said, well, you know, the Bible does say that we can know that we have eternal life. And he was very dismissive. Didn't want to talk about it and just, you know, kind of push his over. You know, the idea, a lot of folks get this idea, well, I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. And they miss this idea, this principle that we're going to talk about in original sin. You, you may do all right. You may live your life more moral than a lot of people on this earth. But the fact that you live a more moral life is not going to get you into heaven. That's right. Why? Because of this thing called original sin. We are all born with a sin nature. We are all born condemned in sin. And this is one. All right. So let's let's talk about that. And I don't know. I'm preaching to the choir, but we've got to make sure we get the foundations because when we get fall, go forward, it's just going. to... Line upon line, precept upon precept, we're just going to keep building. All right, so let's start looking at this. There's a thing first, first of all called the period of probation. The period of probation. And, and here's the statement. Man was created in innocence and a free moral agent. You, you realize when Adam and Eve was created, God said uh, that it was good, right? He created man and woman, male and female, put them in the garden, and he said it was good. Matter of fact, at the end of that, he said it was all very good. So originally, man was created in innocence. And what I mean by that innocence is he had no knowledge of sin. Could you imagine? I can't imagine. I can't even fathom living 
and not even have to worry about sin. Not even think. I mean, it's not even it's not even a option. At that point, just, just no knowledge of sin, no knowledge of wrong. Everything that they did was was perfect and right. <clears throat> you know, I said I jokingly, I said this the other day, and I, you know, I'll say it jokingly again today. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna punch Adam right in the nose. <laughs> you know, what? Look, go ahead. Now that, that's a joke, and, and uh, because we understand that any of us left to ourselves in that position would have done the same thing. Oh, not me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go on, keep talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to stop right here. We'll just think about it for a second. All right, now I'm about to be nervous. Now, what's going on? You're good. I'm good. All right. So, as we move on and start looking at this, we need to realize, number one, he had no knowledge of sin, but that last statement that he was a free moral agent. Now, this is an interesting statement, and we're going to develop this a little bit uh, later, that, that he had the ability to choose between God and evil. God created angels, we talked about that already, to serve him and do as they are told. They are servants, that's all they are. When he created man, he created them a little bit differently. He created us with a will. We are a free moral agent. We, we can choose what we want to do. Now, you, you, you understand last week we made this comment. We can choose the path we take. We just don't get to choose the consequences of that path. Right. All right. God laid forth the consequences, and we'll see that as we go through. All right. So the, the period of probation, number one, we've got to understand the necessity. Why was it necessary for God... Okay, it wasn't necessary for God. <laughs> it was necessary for us that God did this. The necessity of probation. Why was it necessary? The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou, thou mayest freely eat. For the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou, thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis chapter 2, God is laying forth the principle. Right? He's putting forth the test. And we'll get to that in a minute. But the necessity of that test was this, and I think I've got it written in here. If man were given no opportunity to exercise his will, then he'd be as one without a will. Why give man a free will and then not give him the opportunity to use it? Right. To have free will and no opportunity is like not having a will at all. So the necessity is God gave us the free will because his desire is for us to freely worship him of our own volition, if you will, our own will, our own desire. He wants us to desire to worship him. But in order to demonstrate that, he had to give us the opportunity to do otherwise. That's exactly what he did. So the test is this. The test involved a simple choice, obey or disobey. <clears throat> obey or disobey. Now, isn't that the same test that we get today? God lays, Didn't Moses talk to the children of Israel and say, in the book of Deuteronomy, didn't he say, I lay before you a blessing or, and, and a cursing? You can choose to obey God and receive the blessings of God, or you can choose to disobey God and, and receive the cursings of God, but the choice is yours. Which path? What would you like to do? We knocked on doors yesterday, and folks would come to the door, and we would talk to them and say, you've got a choice. You can choose Christ and salvation and eternal life that he gives, or you can choose the path that you're on that's up to you. It's your choice. Doesn't change the consequence, but you, but you get to choose. So the test involves a simple choice to obey or disobey. And God gives us that same choice today. We have the, cho we have the choice today to, to, to obey God, God what God say, not forsake the sin of ourselves together. We had the choice this morning. We could have stayed home. 
We could have stayed home, and God probably wouldn't. Well, not in person. I know he wouldn't have. But he, he would not have come and knocked on our door and said, hey, what are you doing? You know, how, how many in this room? Well, let me say it this way. How many in this room have had this preacher, let be careful with this, have had this preacher come to your house, knock on your door on a Sunday morning and say, hey, where you at? Why ain't you in church? No. Why? Because it's your choice. Now, if I thought it would help, I, you know, I'd start making the right ones and be all right. But, but, but the point is, you have, you have a, a, a will and you have the ability to choose yourself. Again, you can't pick the consequences, but you can pick the path. In this test of probation, God clearly stated beforehand all the consequences of either action. And, and here's the thing. A lot of folks will claim ignorance. But deep, deep down, they, they know. Deep down, we understand. We know what we ought to do. Now, sometimes we'll debate it because we think if we make a strong enough case, no, no. God still says, therefore, we should do it. All right? So he gave us this, back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eat thou, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God gave them the exact consequences. Listen, Adam had experienced ultimate fellowship with God and was fully aware of the consequences of obedience. Adam walked with God in the garden. <clears throat> it was not an uncommon occurrence. It, we read in the scriptures uh, where, well, we will, chapter 3, uh, where God comes to Adam in the, in the evening, in the cool of the day, and calls, Adam, where art thou? Well, Adam wasn't shocked that he was there. This was a common occurrence that God would come and fellowship with Adam and Eve. Adam knew the consequences of obedience. He was living that life. Adam was also told the results of disobedience. That result was death. Let me give you real, real quick. I'll give you this three pointers. This, 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 this outline of preach, by the way. Uh, number one, spiritual death. Now we know, we've read the rest of the story, we know that as soon as Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, they died spiritually. Immediately. Separation from God. Adam or Art now. Spiritual death. Number two, we find that, that it was physical death. And, and we talked about this in the creation. Adam and Eve, when they were created, would they have ever died? No. Well, number one, the tree of life was there. Number two, scientists still don't know why we die. Oh, I mean, they can tell you your heart quit beating or, you, you know, your, your brain quit functioning or your lungs quit working. But why does that happen? They don't know. They can tell you the physical part of it. They've still not been able to create life. They can't tell you why it stops. And then... Number three, eternal death. And that's that ultimate separation from God. So when God told Adam and Eve in, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, thou shalt surely die, Adam knew the consequences of taking that fruit. Kind of puts a whole other perspective on Genesis chapter 3. And the Bible talks about Eve being the weaker vessel, being deceived, and Adam with her. Uh, and and you, you notice in, in Genesis chapter 3 that the fall of man did not take place until Adam took the fruit. And, and that's, uh, you know, that, that's a whole other discussion or debate that we can get into later, and we don't have time for that one today. So let's move on and let's start talking about the power of temptation. We're talking about original sin. So now we'll start talking about the power of temptation. We'll start with the tempter. We'll 
We'll start with the old devil. And let's go ahead and look in Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, yeah, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of, the tree, of every tree of the garden. So he starts off, and, and, and uh, here's another good outline if you want it. Uh, but he starts off talking about this idea of doubt. Casting doubt upon the word of God. Casting doubt upon God himself. And isn't that the first thing Satan does with us? He get us to start doubting the word of God. He can start getting us doubting the things of God. Parents, let me, let me just say this real quick to, to the parents and grandparents in the room uh, this morning. Satan will use our life to affect our children. If, if he can demonstrate to our children that we are telling them something that is incorrect, well, he starts sowing doubt in the, in the minds of those children. Well, if they're not right here, that's why it's so important when we, when, we, when we make a mistake, and we will. That's why it's so important that we go to our children and we say to them, Daddy messed up. I, Daddy was wrong. I've asked God to forgive me. I need you to forgive me. And I need you to understand I made a mistake. They need to see that. Because if they don't see that, then what they start seeing is they start seeing hypocrisy. And they start doubting the things of God. Preacher, that's a whole lot though on a parent. Welcome to reality. I had to make the rules. I don't know if I want to be a parent. That's why, oh, that's, that's a whole other lesson. That's why we've got to teach our young people why they need to be very, very careful what they do with their bodies. Because of, because of the repercussions. I mean, it, 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 there's a whole string of things. All right, that's 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 a whole little, little, another we'll, series. We'll do that later. All right. So he starts talking about sowing doubt. So the temptation we find it basically in three areas, right? Uh, number one is doubt. We talked about that already. Genesis chapter three. Um, we read verse one. We're going to go ahead and read it again and go all the way through verse number three. So now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made, and he said, uh, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said. You shall eat of, the, uh, of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now let's pause there and ask you this question very, very quickly. All right? What did God say in his command? Genesis chapter 2, 16, 17. We've already read it a couple times. What did God say? God said, Thou shalt not eat of it, lest you die. Okay? That's, that's verse. Well, let's go back. We've got, we got it open right here. We can read it and get exactly what he said. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, in, in verse 3, neither shall ye touch it. Where did that come from? Hey, don't panic. There's not, a, there's not a good answer to that question. Where did that... What Was it something that Adam told her? Did, did, Adam, did Adam... And I'm going to use this word on purpose. Did Adam embellish the command of God because maybe he thought it made it stronger? We've got to be careful. Now, and I brought that up just to say this. The danger of adding to the Word of God. We, we, we've got to be very, very careful. God gave us His Word on purpose just the way it is. And when we start trying to add to it, okay, let, let me ask you this question. If she touched the fruit, would she die? No. No. I'm going to chase a rabbit here, but I want to do this, so, so there, here's a principle we need to learn. And again, it's, it's dealing with others and talking to others about the Lord and we need to be very, very careful what we say. Okay, let's take this statement 
Let's again, let's move it into the context of training our children. You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Well, what's going to happen if that child or that person touches that fruit and they don't die? Well, they didn't tell me the truth. I didn't die. I touched it. I didn't die. Right. So I wonder if I eat it if I'm going to die. You can see the dangers? We've got, we've got to get to the place where we understand. And, and I think this all flows in this idea of original sin. That when we start, when we start trying to uh, add to the Word of God, and we're all about you preaching, don't take away, don't take away, don't take away. And I'm all for that, that side of it. But I, but I am just as strong as this. Don't add to it. Don't, don't try to, you know, well, it, uh, I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it stronger. No, God gave it the way He wanted it to be given. And, and I just see the danger there. Uh, that can come from the fact that you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. I wonder if she was holding it when, when she said that. I don't know. We've got to be very, very careful how we handle the Word of God and how we teach and train others according to the gospel. The second thing that he did, not only did he, did he so doubt, but he directly denied the Word of God. That was the second thing that he did, Genesis chapter 3, verse 4. And the servant said to the woman, ye shall not surely die. Really? Come on. What were they expecting? She didn't die. She ate the fruit. She's still breathing. She's still standing there. I didn't die. She died spiritually. We understand that. We know the rest of the story. And we also know that she's going to die physically. She did, I don't know that she understood that at that moment. Got away with it. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the snake is right. Maybe God's just been lying to us. Man, we've got to be careful. And then the deception... The deception that follows. First John chapter 2, verse 16 says this, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And, and, and I'm just going to make this connection very quickly uh, about how we can connect First uh, John chapter 2 with Genesis chapter 3, exactly what happened there. Uh, number one, we find the lust of the flesh. Uh, the Bible tells us this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Well, tastes good. I'm sure she don't have taste yet, but you know, it's good for food. Why can't I eat? Because God said not to. Well, why can't I run with this bunch? Because God said not to. Well, why can't I believe like this? Because God said not to. See the principle. Number two, the lust, of the, the lust of the eyes. First, it was the lust of the flesh. It was good for food. Got to live. Boy, don't we justify a lot of things? Well, I got to live. Got to make a living. And I've heard that. If, if I've heard that once, we're back to the choices that we make. And I'm not fussing if you got to work on Sundays. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not fussing and, and saying that you're just not a God. I never said that. But I did say this. You, when you walk with God and you start getting close to the Lord, the Lord's going to give you a desire to want to be in his house. And he's going to give you a desire to want to seek, start trying to seek a way to be there. And if you'll look for a way, and you'll submit yourself to God, oh, yeah, by the way. Oh, I don't know about that. I've seen that happen too many times. Too many times. Folks that honestly made the commitment, God, you make a way and I'll follow. All right, lust of the, the, the lust of the, the eyes, and that it was pleasant. That it was play. Look good. I gotta eat. I gotta live. And show it's pretty. Looks like it tastes good. Well, we gotta be careful. The third was the pride of life. She said this in a in a tree to be desired. 
to make one wise. Satan knows exactly how to play us. And that's exactly what he did to Eve. It's exactly what he did to Adam. That's exactly what he does to us because of original sin. Because we now inherit a sin nature. And it is natural for us to sin. All right, the sin of man, we'll finish up. We have 10 minutes. We'll finish this, this, this part of it. We'll, we'll kind of get this concept uh, of original sin. So what was the sin of man? Number one, it was a choice. It was a choice. God laid before them a choice to sin. James chapter 1, verse 14, verse 15 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. So we see the process there. Drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That sin potential is in us. It's there. Why? Because we carry the flesh. Even those, even those of us that are born again, saved, trying to walk with the Lord, that, that possibility or here propensity to sin is still there. And we've got to deal with it daily. Number two, the types of sin. You know this. We'll, we'll hit it quickly and we'll, we'll, we're almost done. Number one, those sins of commission. Sins of commission. Those things that we do. Actions that we take. Choices that we make. First John chapter 1, verse 10. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his words not in us. All right, those are just things that we choose to do. We know they're wrong. We know we, know we shouldn't. <clears throat> we know God's against it, but we do it anyway. Why? Well, because I wanted to. Let's be honest. Because I wanted to. Because I thought it would be fun. Yeah, some folks think getting on a roller coaster and going like this is fun. They need to be checked out. I'm just saying I'm, I'm I know we got something here to like. <laughs> it's just not natural. Come on, man. That's like jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. <laughs> you might get me out of a perfectly good airplane, but there's going to be claw marks on the side of that thing as I go out, out the door. Hold on. Put on. Have you ever jumped out of a plane? Amen. I, 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 airborne, I figured you had. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, I guess if I had to, I could, but. I ain't getting in line. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll chase that rabbit. All right. Um, so the second one is that sin of omission. See, there are sins of commission. We don't like to deal with some of these. That, that, that commission thing, we, can, we, 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 we accept, we deal with because that one's obvious. Then the sins of omission, and, and here's the fun verse, right? James chapter 4, verse 17, Therefore to him that to do good, doeth it not. To him it is sin. That, that's those things that we know that we ought to do that we don't do. All right? The first one was those things that we know we ought to do, that, that we ought not to do, and we do. This one is the one we ought to we ought to know we ought to do, what we don't do. You know, that's I already said this one, up, so, so I'll say it again. You know, the Bible very clearly does state not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. So we know we ought to go to church. So when we don't. I could chase that rabbit a little bit. We'll, we'll, leave, it. we'll leave it there. All right. And then the last one is the sin of disposition. The sin of disposition, or we'd call this a sin of attitude. A motive. A sin of attitude or the sin of motive. You ask and receive not, James chapter 4, verse 3, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. You ask for the wrong motive, the wrong reason. I've used this illustration. I, um, I don't. I, I won't pick on Miss Katie right now, but I've used this illustration for years about you know my son. If 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 he was still at home and, and I said, all right, son, I need you to take out the trash. All right. If he got up off the couch and stomped to the back door, slung the back door open, slammed it as he went out, <clears throat> grabbed the trash can, muttered all the way to the road, slammed it down. Walk back in the house. 
looked at me as he walked by and plopped back down the couch. Now, he took the trash out. He did what I told him to do. Mm -hmm. Sin of disposition. Mode of attitude. Right? We've got to be very careful that we don't do the right things for the wrong reason or with the wrong spirit. All right. So we're talking about the types of sin. So here's the conclusion in this idea of original sin. All right. The conclusion number one, man was created in innocence. Oh, for those days. Oh, for the good old days, right? <laughs> you realize one day we'll be back to the way it was? One day we'll have a new heaven and a new earth. We'll get to experience what Adam experienced in the garden. Fellowship with God face to face. Man was created in innocence. Number two, man chose to sin. Adam's choice brought sin into the world. Death by sin. And it's passed to all men according to the scriptures. And number three, man must now face the consequences of his sin. And I'll finish. I'll finish with again talking about Efforts to reach folks with the gospel. Why, why do we go? Why do you go knock doors? Why do you talk to your coworkers and your neighbors and your friends about the Lord? We do that because every person breathing God's good air that has reached the age of accountability will stand before God in judgment because of original sin. I've asked this question before. What do you have to do? What do you have to do to go to hell? What sin do you have to commit? What? Where's the list? Here's what you have to do. Here it is. You do these ten things, you're done for. You're in. You're gone. There's not a list. Why? Because the Bible clearly teaches that every individual born in the world since Adam and Eve are born with a sin nature, which means they are headed for hell. The answer to my question is, what do you have to do to go to hell? Uh, that would be nothing. You just go the way you're going. Be a good moral person. Be a good old boy, good old lady. Good old lady. Doesn't sound like me. Be, 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 be a good old boy or, or, or a good woman. At least I corrected it. But that's not good enough. Why do we do it? Because there must be a choice. The consequence of sin is death and separation for God, from God forever. And all of us are under that curse of sin until. That time when we realize we're a sinner before a holy God and we realize that Jesus Christ died in our place and we realize that if we confess our sin and ask him to forgive us, he will forgive our sin and he will, here's the word, redeem us. What does that word redeem mean? Listen, it's to make a Presbyterian shout. It means to buy back. You get that picture? Yes. That person that looked at God, cursed in his face and said, see you. Care nothing about you. I'd rather what I want, I want what I want instead of what you want. Jesus Christ still came to this earth, died on the cross, loved us enough when we could spit in the face of God. And there are still people today that will reject salvation and walk away and willingly choose 
hell for him. I, I, I don't understand that. But here's what that does for me. That encourages me to tell that story one more time. To knock on that door one more time. To visit that family one more time. To talk to my relatives one more time. if something doesn't happen and they don't make a choice to change their life <clears throat> hell is their home forever I'm not trying to be ugly and scare people about that's not, not my, my point but that's the reality that's the reality that ought to motivate a church so that's the right the reality that ought to motivate born again people <clears throat> to reach the lost of the gospel why do people go to Africa I gotta quit. Why, why do people make those? Because they understand what we're talking about this morning. They understand the rich and sin. They understand that all are sinners before a holy God. Father, we're thankful for the day. What a joy it's been. Just to spend a little bit of time talking about original sin and the remedy. I'm glad that we're not stuck without hope. I'm glad that we have a remedy in Christ. I'm glad that you came. You died, and you still have the Holy Spirit working to draw us into salvation. Father, I pray if there's one on the side of my voice that needs Christ as your Savior, as their Savior, that they would come to you before it's too late. Father, be with us in the remainder of our services. Be with the, the preaching time. Pray that you'd bless uh, with your Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>